So, the folks at Epic Games have just announced Unreal Engine 5.3. This brand new version of Unreal Engine comes with a wide ranging set of improvements and functionalities that would help game developers and creators across the industry. From core rendering to developer iteration, virtual production. For those who are working with Nanite, there's also some faster performances that is now available. And if you're into rendering and you work with Lumen, there's a couple of cool improvements that now includes multiple reflection bounces that delivers faster performances on consoles. At the same time, advancements with visual shadow maps are now available and this has been stated to be production ready. Temporal super resolution is also available. The hair grooms, path tracing are all coming together in Unreal Engine 5.3. And one of the goals with Unreal Engine 5.3 is to reduce the round trips that is needed from external apps back into Unreal Engine or from Unreal Engine to external apps. And some of the cool things that we've already mentioned, which is now available in Unreal Engine 5.3, includes the skeletal editor. We did make a full video about this one, which explains some of the cool improvements that is now available that allows anyone to rig their characters directly in Unreal Engine and skin them however they choose. The new skeletal editor now provides animators and riggers with a variety of tools for working with skeletal meshes, which includes the ability to paint weight and also get those deformations going. Alongside that, there is also the panel-based chaos clothes and ML simulation. So instead of traveling to some other DCC apps to do your clothes simulation, this can now be done directly in Unreal Engine. Chaos Cloth was already in Unreal Engine, but right now they've introduced the panel cloth editor and a new skin weight transfer algorithm has now been included. This now allows creators to work in a non-destructive mode when creating cloth simulation in Unreal Engine. In addition to this, the use of the panel-based cloths can also result in better looking simulations. Cloths can also be simulated and cached in engine using the new panel cloth editor in conjunction with the ML deformer editor. This is definitely going to save artists a lot of time and give potential cloth simulators or fashion artists working with Unreal Engine a more flexible way to work with these tools. Something else which is also interesting to see is autographic rendering. Autographic rendering is now here and this is very useful for visualizing architecture and manufacturing projects as well as offering autographic projections as a stylistic camera choice for games. And while we speak about rendering, the scene camera rig rail is also available. So filmmakers can now rest easy by simply using this new workflow that allows for much more traditional camera movement along tracks or dollies, as the new scene camera rig rail actor now allows for a more flexible way of controlling your cameras in Unreal Engine. And different control points can be attached within the path where you're setting up your camera rail as this also is supported for both the in editor which is when you work inside unreal engine or when you're working with the vcam workflow and while we speak about vcam some enhancement to vcams and how you shoot record operate your cameras while using your ipad or your devices as v cameras is also available facilitating a more collaborative workflow between the director the content which you're working on and also the camera crew and while we talk about vcams and display support for smpte st2110 is now here this now lays the groundwork for a range of hardware configurations that opens a new set of possibility for LED stage. And if you've worked in virtual production, you do understand some of the issues that comes up when setting up LED stages. And this is definitely going to help mitigate some of those. And one of the cool things that comes with this is the configuration now uses a dedicated machine for each camera first room you're using. And this simply maximizes the potential of rendering resolutions and increases frame rate while allowing for a more complex scene geometry and lighting than the previous setup that we had. There is also some very cool features that I think you guys should also see. The sparse volume texture and also the path tracing for heterogeneous volumes are here. And this now introduces a number of capabilities for volumetric effect, which includes smokes and fires. So at this point, when working with VDBs, you can now get the most out of them, as the sparse volume textures now store big simulation data representing volumetric media and can be simulated from Niagara or imported from a VDB file which has been created in other DCC apps. In addition to this, there is a more complete support for rendering volumes, although this is currently available in experimental when working with the path tracer, but this offers the potential for high quality volumetric rendering which now includes global illumination shadows and scattering for cinematic films, games, and also animation. And with the new release, developers are not left out. There is a multi-process cook, which simply means that developers can now leverage an additional CPU and memory resources when converting content from the internal Unreal Engine format to platform specific format and this significantly reduces the time it takes to get the output done and enabling multi-process cook launches sub-processes that performs part of a cooking or processing alongside the main process and developers can choose to select how many sub-processes that they want to run a single machine at any time. 
So this is it, lots of cool things are now available in Unreal Engine. We did talk about Nanite and some of the very cool features that were coming to it when we talked about Unreal Engine 5.3 being in beta. We did mention that some of the tools that were coming to Nanite were in experimental. We also looked at Lumen and we've already discussed some of these ones that we just mentioned today. It's also worth mentioning that Substrate is currently in experimental and for those who are thinking about working with here, there's a cool set of updates for that. And if you're into world beauty, you might want to consider taking a look at the Nanite landscape. There is also some very cool improvements to the procedural content generation and there is just a whole lot of things that I would suggest that you control and read up for yourself. So this is it, the folks at Epic Games have just announced Unreal Engine 5.3 and this comes with a ton of things that you should definitely consider checking out. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you like something from this you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend and until I see you guys in the next one, peace.